Cinnamon rolls are possibly the only acceptable breakfast to be eaten on Christmas morning. If you feel otherwise, please let me know down in the comments. Now I've been searching for a great cinnamon roll recipe for years. Last year I found one I love and today we're going to make it, so let's just jump right into it. Now I had a certain idea about what I want out of my cinnamon rolls and I tried a few different recipes and the one that I enjoyed the most was a recipe by The Preppy Kitchen. My mom's favorite creator, second to me of course, or at least that's what I keep telling myself. And to get started, like in all baking, we start with dry ingredients and separately we take care of wet ingredients. So first we're gonna start with the dry ingredients. Now I'm gonna be using a stand mixer to make this, so I'm gonna add the dry ingredients directly to the stand mixer bowl. And since we're baking and I have a scale, I always recommend using a scale for baking. I used to think you didn't really need one, but it's really just because I never had a scale. Until I bought one, it's literally the easiest thing to use in almost all instances of measuring ingredients. So I'm gonna get it on the scale, and then I'm gonna tear it down to zero. First we need three and a half cups or 420 grams of all-purpose flour. And I overshot just a little bit, so I'm gonna use a spoon and just pull it out until I reach 420 grams and then 50 grams of granulated sugar, and then 50 grams of light brown sugar. Now always make sure you tightly wrap back up that brown sugar. I like to make sure it's nice and tight and then I add it back into the box upside down, try and prevent any air from getting in there in the pantry. Teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of cinnamon, and then one package of Rapid Rise Instant Yeast. You wanna make sure you get instant yeast, not active dry yeast. There's a difference. This is a larger grain of yeast, so it needs to be hydrated. This is a smaller grain. We can add it right into the dry ingredients. When we add the wet and form the dough, it should start to rise. You want the rapid rise instant yeast. And for this recipe, we're going with the entire packet. But if you don't have a packet, so you have like a jar, it's gonna be two and a quarter teaspoons. So there we have our dry ingredients. Give it a nice little mix. Now we can talk about wet ingredients. I need egg, butter, sour cream, vanilla. I keep the sour cream, egg, and butter all at room temperature. And when you make the butter for the filling and for the cream cheese frosting, you always wanna make sure everything is at room temperature. And then some whole milk. I'm gonna hold the egg off to the side. And in this, I'm gonna add half cup or 120 milliliters of whole milk. By the way, the milk doesn't need to be room temp. Six tablespoons or 85 grams of unsalted butter. I like to use a good Irish butter. I need a remaining two tablespoons of softened butter for the cream cheese frosting, so I'm gonna save this. One tablespoon or 15 milliliters of vanilla extract. I always eyeball it. And then a half cup of sour cream, or 120 grams. Now I'm gonna pop this into the microwave in about 20 second increments. And I'm gonna slowly melt the butter and bring this whole mixture up to about 100 to 110 degrees. So it's warm, everything's melted, and it's gonna be the right temperature to activate that yeast, that instant yeast that's in the dry mixture. So into the microwave. So like I said, I just wanna gently heat this up. So into the microwave for 20 seconds, and then I'm gonna take it out after 20 seconds, give it a nice little stir, then pop it back into the microwave for another 20 seconds. At this point, I'm gonna measure the temperature. It's a little below 100 degrees. So back into the microwave for 10 to 15 more seconds, and we should be right in our 100 to 110 degree range, and the butter should be melted, and should be a smooth combined mixture. Now just pour that mixture directly into the dry ingredients. And use a spatula, make sure you get every last drop. That's what spatulas are for. Now set up your stand mixer with the dough hook attachment. You can do this by hand, of course, especially if you have an electric mixer, but we're gonna use the KitchenAid, get the dough hook attachment on, and then let it go. Now we're gonna let this dough work on about medium speed on the KitchenAid. And while that goes, I'm gonna crack an egg into a separate bowl, make sure there's no shells or anything in there. And once that ball of dough comes together, I'm gonna add the egg to it, and that egg is gonna moisten it and loosen it back up. And so we're just gonna let it go. And I'm using my judgment, I can see the dough isn't quite forming a workable dough quite yet. It's still a little too sticky, so what I'm going to do is add about a tablespoon or so of flour at a time to the dough while it's mixing until it just starts to pull away from the edges of the mixing bowl and when I touch it it's no longer tacky or sticky and won't stick to my hand just like this it's moist it's workable but it's not sticky and that's exactly what you want to do just use the flour to get to that point and once it's there we're gonna flour a work surface we're gonna get the dough ball onto the work surface and then we're gonna knead it for about five minutes using flour as needed but I actually threw a little bit too much flour on the board. And I'm gonna wipe most of that flour off of the board. I don't wanna add too 
too much flour to the cinnamon rolls or they'll become dense and tough. So right now I like the feel of the dough. I'm gonna get a lot of that excess flour off the board. I'm gonna knead it for another two, three minutes. Then I'm gonna close up that ball of dough just at the bottom with my hands, just pinch it closed, shape it into a nice round ball. And you got this warm dough. It's, it's got an aroma of cinnamon to it. It's a beautiful dough. You don't spank your meat, you spank buns. Get a little oil, a little grease inside the bowl. I'm gonna cover it and then we gotta let this rise. We need it to basically at least double in size. And since we have all that milk and the butter and the sour cream, all these things that are enriching this dough, which is gonna make it really good in the end, it's gonna slow down the rise process. So what you could do is set the oven to absolute lowest temperature, 120 degrees, 150 degrees, and then turn it off. And you can pop that sucker in there to create sort of like a warm box. But my strategy is I know this room in my apartment is the coldest because I have these windows windows and it's actually cold right now. But if I close the door to my cozy little office, I make sure it's not sitting on any kind of cold stone surface. I put it on a nice little couch. I wrap it in a nice blanket or like a winter coat and I just let that sit. And when I tested it, it took about three hours for it to fully rise to the appropriate size. We'll check back in when the dough is risen. It could take an hour and a half. It could take three hours. We're just gonna keep an eye on it and use our judgment. You also wanna remember at some point during that rise, you wanna pull out the butter and the cream cheese. Let it come down to room temperature for the cream cheese frosting and for the butter filling. So it's been about three hours and the dough is looking good. It's still nice and cozy in the other room. But before we take it out, we can, we can prepare the cinnamon sugar filling. Got a little bowl here, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, two tablespoons of the light brown sugar. And you always pack brown sugar when you measure it. Pack the brown sugar nice and tight so it doesn't get all clumpy. And then one tablespoon of cinnamon. Break up that sugar, mix it all together. And then four tablespoons of 57 grams of room temperature unsalted butter. Now I forgot to take it out to room temp. I'm just gonna cut them very thin so that they get nice and room temp fairly quickly. See, I got confused. I left the butter out for the frosting and I forgot to leave butter out for the filling. We're gonna let that hang out by the stove, which we've got preheating at 350 degrees. Now while we've got some time to allow that butter to come down to room temperature, we can get started making the frosting. First, we're gonna get in with the butter. It's that two tablespoons that we had reserved from the dough. Then about four ounces of cream cheese, or about 114 grams. A tablespoon of vanilla, a little bit of milk to thin it out, a little squeeze of lemon juice. Not too much. I just want to faintly taste it in the background. And before we add the sugar, I want to beat this nice and smooth. Now you can do this in a food processor, but I just can't imagine getting another thing dirty right now. I'm gonna do this in a big measuring bowl and that should cream real quickly. And then I need two cups of powdered sugar, but I'm not gonna add it all at the same time. I'm gonna go about a half cup at a time, whisking it in until it's nice and incorporated until all two cups of the powdered sugar have been worked into the frosting. And you've got a nice ribbony frosting. It's beautiful sweet and smooth it's perfect if it's a little too thick you can add a little bit more milk or if it's a little too thin just keep adding that powdered sugar ah it's perfect what's better than frosting see how fast already softening i just want it to get spreadable so that we can spread it on the dough without kind of tearing it out there still and then we can roll out our dough so the dough has been nice and cozy i threw in a few christmas movies a little muppet christmas carol you should also check out the man who invented christmas about how charles dickens wrote a christmas carol my favorite christmas movie it's been three hours and the dough is ready now to use look how much life is in this dough it's gotten so much bigger this smell ah uh, it's one of the best smells you can see air bubbles in there you spank your dough see all that air we're gonna roll it out now onto a floured work surface into a nice big rectangle. So once again, we're gonna flour that work surface nice and lightly. Again, we don't wanna work too much flour into the dough. Then with a rolling pin, I'm gonna start rolling this out into a rectangle. And once I get it down to a certain thinness, I'm gonna use my hands and just stretch it into almost more of a rectangle just to help me and the rolling pin roll it out into the correct shape. So I'm just gonna go ahead with that rolling pin and roll it out into a big rectangle that's about a quarter of an inch thick. Once you got a nice thin rectangular sheet, we can add the cinnamon sugar filling. All right, so now what we're going to do is rub that room temperature butter all over the surface, except for 
one of these narrow edges. Cause I'm gonna roll them this way. And when you roll them that way, you're gonna get bigger, more spiraled cinnamon rolls, but you're gonna get fewer. If you wanna make more, then you'll roll them this way and you'll leave a little bit of this long edge unbuttered instead of the short edge. You'll get more cinnamon rolls, but they'll be smaller. I'm gonna go for fewer, but larger. So I'm just gonna slowly and gently start spreading that butter all over the dough. And what I'm gonna do first, so I don't forget and spread butter on this side, is just set that little border on the edge that I'm gonna use to seal the cinnamon rolls. Once you've got that little unbuttered strip set, you could go ahead and completely cover the rest of the dough in a thin layer of that butter. It's really just there to help the cinnamon sugar mixture stick to the dough. Once you've got that butter spread out, then we can go ahead, sprinkle that cinnamon sugar in a nice thin layer over the entire surface, except for that unbuttered strip, making sure there are zero bald spots left over. So now, like I said, we're gonna start to roll from this side over there, but you wanna make sure you roll it really tight. So in the beginning, we're gonna make sure we're very careful, going very slowly to make sure we get a really tight roll to start and then it'll be easier as we go. So you just wanna get that real first curl nice and tight, and then you can start to use your whole hand to roll it. But as you see, the side closest to the camera got a little loose. So I'm just gonna fold it in, I'm gonna tuck it, I'm gonna pull it back nice and taut and you can continue to keep slowly making your way across the surface of the deck. Once you're pretty sure you've gotten that core nice and tight, then you can just kind of go ahead and roll it all the way up until you've reached that unbuttered strip. I'm gonna make sure the seam is at the bottom. I'm just gonna add a little bit of gentle pressure to shape and seal the cinnamon rolls. Now to cut it, if you're gonna use a knife, you're gonna squash the cinnamon roll. So instead you use a waxless, flavorless piece of floss. And it's almost like how they cut cheese. We're gonna use this floss to cut little nice cinnamon roll. I think I'm gonna shimmy the floss right underneath. This is about an inch and a half. That's about the right size, I think, for the roll. So I'm just gonna use that as a guide. Then you just shimmy that floss underneath the dough, crisscross the two strands, and then pull. And you should be able to cut these cinnamon rolls without squashing them, maintaining their beautiful circular spiral and shape. You should end up with around eight cinnamon rolls. Once I've got them cut, I'm just gonna take a little knob of butter and I'm gonna grease an eight by eight baking dish. That won't fit all of the cinnamon rolls, but I only wanna bake five and then I'm gonna save the rest. So in that eight by eight square baking dish, I'm gonna add five of the cinnamon rolls in sort of this X pattern. There's space in between each other that's gonna allow them to rise and double in size and not get too crowded. If they're too crowded, they won't rise and you won't get a fluffy texture. Now at this point, you got three options. Option one, cover with plastic wrap, pop it in the refrigerator, go to sleep Christmas Eve, wake up early. I don't know how your family dynamic is. Ours starts a little later. Maybe yours starts a little earlier. Maybe you get up just a little bit early, take this out, put this in a warm spot, allow it to come down to room temperature and allow each one of those little cinnamon rolls now to rise and double in size one more time. I'm cooking these today. So option number two would be to now let these rise again before we bake them. So I'm gonna put these back into our nice warm cozy spot in the other room, allow them to double in size, and then maybe in about 30 minutes, an hour, we'll be ready to bake them. So we're gonna get them snuggled back up, pop on another Christmas movie for these cinnamon rolls to watch, and check back in in about an hour. And then option three, I'm gonna put these in a tray with parchment paper, like that, wrap it, and then I'm gonna put these into the freezer, let these freeze up for about 30 minutes, and then put them into Ziploc bags. When I wanna cook them again, I'll take them out, I'll allow them to thaw, put them in a buttered baking dish, and then allow them to rise by double again before we bake them in a 350 degree oven. So you have options. So now all we have to do is wait for the cinnamon rolls to rise, bake them and ice them, and we're in heaven. And then about one hour later, as you can see, the cinnamon rolls have puffed up and now they're almost touching. They're ready to be baked. Now as you can see, they've risen for a second time. These are perfect. They're ready to go into a 350 degree oven. We're gonna cook them for about 30 minutes, but I'm gonna check them at 20 minutes, give them a rotate, and just make sure that they're not browning too quickly. So then pop those into the center of the oven and set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes is up, let's give them a check. Beautiful, they've puffed up perfectly. That's exactly what you wanna see. Now it just needs a little bit more color. So I'm going to give them a rotate. Back in for another 10 minutes. It's been about 30 minutes. I think we're ready to take them out. So now you can see we've developed a really nice, beautiful golden color to these buns. 
think they're ready. I just want to test them real quick. Just gonna use a cake tester. Make sure it comes out clean into the center one. You should be good to go. Then right as they come out of the oven, we want to ice them. So you want to go ahead and use about half of the frosting to ice the top of the cinnamon rolls right out of the oven. And I like to use a spatula, get a nice amount on top and then just spread it around and make sure that the entire surface of those cinnamon buns at this point get covered in that icing and almost sort of soak it up. Then we're gonna let them cool for a few minutes. They're gonna be really hot in the center, so you just wanna let them settle down a bit before you eat them. And then take a knife and just kinda separate it from that center bun, spoon it onto a plate, and right before I serve, I'll add a little bit more of that icing. Then we can cut it open, and you can see the beautiful layers. It's fluffy, it's soft, perfectly iced. And of course, you can make this any time of year, but when it comes to Christmas morning, I can't imagine a single other thing I'd wanna eat. My God, I've now had five cinnamon rolls in two days. I've got to be stopped. Regardless of that, I still believe this is the only thing to eat on Christmas morning. Shout out to Preppy Kitchen for the recipe. I'll be including it in my holiday plan of attack, linked down in the description. It's not a book yet, maybe next year. That's all that I have today. I'm going to go eat another five cinnamon rolls. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. For more holiday recipes like this beautiful honey nut squash risotto that is perfect for the holidays, I'll leave a link on the screen as well as a few other links in my holiday playlist if you're interested. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching.